that was the debate in parliament but with the indian economy taking a hit how tough will it be to for the government to implement sonia gandhi's 20 billion dollar food security plan that was passed in the lok sabha yesterday economists are already raising doubts over the economic viability of the food bill but the upa believes that it could be just the political game changer ahead of elections pallavi ghosh has more the result of the division is ayes 252 dos 141 even as the food bill was passed in lok sabha sonia gandhi was admitted in aims taken ill suddenly just hours after she made a rare speech in parliament aggressively pushing for her dream bill i believe is bringing about an empowerment revolution in our country something we are proud to have facilitated the bill has taken over four years to become a reality since it was first conceived by sonia a delay caused by resistance from within her own party and government the fiercest coming from sharad pawar the prime minister and chidambaram but with sonia refusing to listen to a no all fell in line food security bill is just one component of subsidies if we want to keep total subsidies under control, I don't think you should regard the food subsidy as the one that's most vulnerable. It's not a question of Sonia's dream bill. This is what the country needs. The hurdle then came in from the Alai Samajwadi Party who demanded several amendments to protect the farmers' interests. But again, they too fell in line with drawing many of the key amendments. The food bill is being seen as a game changer and Sonia hopes it will do for the Congress in 2014 what farm loan waivers did in 2009, though economists are not convinced yet. It doesn't stop here though. After the food bill, Sonia is now pushing for the land acquisition and resettlement bill, something which the corporates and real estate is not enthused about. Sonia has now moulded herself completely on mother-in-law Indira Gandhi's style of politics. If baby had Telling slogan, Sonia hopes that Aam Admi, Aapka Paisa, Aapke Haad and Aapka Zameen, Aapka will be the winning slogan in 2014 too. The food security bill is being seen as a new deal moment for Sonia Gandhi. But the mounting criticism and the question is that at a time when the finance minister is struggling to bring the economy on track, can it really afford Sonia's dream bills which are heavily subsidy driven like the food security, the Mandrega and now the land acquisition bill. The Bureau inputs in New Delhi, Pallavi Kosh. The big question then that we are raising, food security bill, political game changer or economic catastrophe? That's the big question on India at 9 tonight. Joining me now, Siddharth Zarabi, economic policy editor at CNBC TV 18. From the Congress, Abhishek Manu Singhvi, member of parliament and spokesperson, BJ Panda of the Biju Janta Dal, Naresh Gujral of the NDA, member of parliament of the Shiromni Akali Dal, Shankar Ayer, author of uh, a path-breaking book on the Indian economy, and Sandeep Shastri, national convener of Lokniti Network, to give us a political perspective. All bases covered, but first you, Abhishek Manu Singhvi. The Congress last night appeared to be in a celebratory mood, almost as if the food security bill was an election victory. Now a day later, you've been hit by reality. Markets down 590 points, rupee hitting a new low. Would you concede that your euphoria has proven very, very short-lived and doesn't match the harsh reality confronting the economy today? Rajdeep, if uh, policy making or legislation yes. was to be buffeted by the spirals of 24-hour cycles, then I think it would be a very poor country and a poor perspective. We certainly don't get buffeted. Dr. Let's Singh, this is not a 24-hour cycle. That, Please, that, can I, can sir, I, I, I just want to I, say this is I, not just, just a 24-hour cycle. Let the I economy has been steadily Rajdeep, going downward for months. But go ahead. Please go ahead. Rajdeep, I've just started. Not even one sentence Yes, over. yes, please Let go ahead. Explain. Please go ahead. You, uh, your question has been longer than I answered it now. Okay. Now, the sh uh, first point, Rajdeep, is yes. that every political this thing about vote catching gimmick or vote security bill etc which i was saying since yesterday yes. i don't think any political party unless it is totally hypocritical yes. or people believe that it is hypocritical yes. is going to pass measures measures and uh, initiatives which are not going to get it popularity and support when we declare something in our manifesto yes. when we come up with our heads held high that this is our signature campaign among other signature campaigns earlier then we are prepared to take the hit for it we are prepared to suffer the consequences we are prepared to take the benefit so let's not shy away from this that political party is some kind of a cocoon or an ivory tower and is not to do things which will get its support but ultimately the question is it is a being popular is not being populist 
Is this Singh something we, which the country do, needs? Do, is it de- one second? Just give me half a minute. Yes. Is this something detrimental to the country? Yes. Is it something perverse? Well, we think not. I don't expect everybody here or in the panel or elsewhere in the country to agree with us. But we have proclaimed this not now, but when we sought elections. Dr. And as Singh, I said, Dr. we are Singh, prepared this to was in your manifesto in 2009. Now, how it will happen? Th- how it will happen? Whether it will happen or not? Whether yes. there will be 20 roadblocks? Whether there will be enough money? These are how questions. When your ambition, your desire, and your goal is clear, you will find ways. And let me tell you, these doomsday scenarios are yes. not discussed by our panel, Rajdeep. When a tax exemption or an excise exemption or a uh, tax shelter is given for the haves, which, which may we, in one percent or one line in the act have a huge cascading effect. Ms. Dr. There is not Singh, this amount of doomsday scenario that the whole country is going to sit down because of one food security bill. Let me tell you, Rajdeep, yes. it's the same government, the same prime minister, the same finance minister, or an earlier finance minister was a very eminent well, uh, president now, and other people who had for eight and a half years odd, their lowest growth rate was higher than the highest of the ND. Dr. Singh, yes, we are having bad times for 18 months. Yes, we are having bad times for 18 months. Maybe the bad times will go a little longer. But if you have a temporary bad time, you don't sit back and lament and say, look, doomsday scenario has struck I'm and you ascribe the whole lot to a poor food security bill. Dr. Singhvi, it's not about doomsday scenarios. The fact is this was part of your manifesto in 2009. You don't do anything about it for four years because there are differences in your government about whether to implement it, how to implement it. You do it now, just before the elections, people will naturally believe this is political cynicism, opportunism, call it now what let, you will. You are putting you political security, minutes. you are putting political security of the Congress me, party ahead of the economic security of a country called India. Okay, let me... Let me, let me just quickly answer for you other panelists. First yes. point, yes. implicit in your statement and in all the statements since yesterday is a candid admission that this can't be so negative and bad for the country that the whole country in a groundswell of support is going to be supporting us for this, which is what you imply, and yet it is so anti-public interest. I have not suggested that... There's a contradiction that in what you say. I, I am number suggesting two, that you didn't two, do anything minute, about it for two, four years. Number two, n- how is that relevant? Now, you forget, first of all, that's not relevant. Because we said we'll do it and we did it. But the second answer, yes. we did not do it, Rajdeep, earlier because you know very well that from 2009 we started. Yes. It went through three committees. The earlier versions had 33% coverage, then 50% coverage. Doc- there was a genuine interministerial f- Dr. fight Singh, over it. Dr. your and government is calling the on the country to tighten its belts. Forces, Sir, we, your, country, uh, your government is calling the country to tighten its belts, but you won't tighten your belts. You it, will it, call it, the it country to tighten its belts, but you don't tighten the belt. No, the economy is on a cliff. No, one minute. That's a different issue. That I'm is an issue. Delay point first. It took us three and a half years because there was genuine debate in front of your cameras. You had people saying not 67% coverage, yes. not this urban poor, not that BPL, not this APL. Well, ultimately, the perfect can't be the enemy of the good, Rajdeep. You decide to have something which you ultimately decide and you decide to take the hit for it or the benefit of it. Okay. And we have done it openly. Okay. The fact is, Naresh Gujral, you've heard the Congress spokesperson there. You've been a vocal critic of the food security, both in terms of the costs involved and the fact that you believe it will end up subsuming already existing t- scheme, be it midday meal, integrated child development, Antyodai. And yet in Parliament, no one from the opposition, including your Akali Dal and the NDA, decided to vote against the bill. So even those who now worry about the economic consequences are also worried somewhere that if you vote against the bill, you will be seen as anti-poor. So there is a consensus in Parliament, while in TV studios you will attack the Congress for this bill. Rajdeep, yes, it's a brazen attempt to cheat the poor people of this country. Basically, they are saying that it will cost 1,25,000 crores. Yes. In reply to my question in Parliament on Friday, the Food Minister said that PDS this year would have cost 1,13,000 crores and the midday scheme 13,250 crores, which is roughly the same amount as this bill. Why didn't you oppose so it, Mr. Gujral? Why didn't you then oppose me. it in Parliament, let me, sir? Let me. Why didn't you oppose let it me, in Parliament? It. Why didn't you let, defeat the bill? Let me complete. Yeah, go ahead. If you let me complete, then yes. I... What I am saying is, yes. we are not in a position to defeat the bill at all. Yes. But what I am trying to emphasize is, 
that it is only window dressing. Yes. They are giving nothing to the poor. In fact, the six and a half crore BPL families who were getting 35 kg of food per month yes. will now be entitled to only 25 kgs. So, in fact, the poorest of the poor are being robbed. And they are trying to sell as if they are doing something revolutionary for the poor of this country. As, as for your second question, yes. that why is no, nobody opposing it, Yes, you would recall that in 71, when Mrs. Gandhi came out with the Garibi Hatao program, yes. she finally went to the polls to say, I want to do Hatao Garibi and they want to Hatao me. We don't want to be victims of the same propaganda again this time. No political party in a democracy can be seen to be opposing what what is in inverted commas seems like a populist ah, program. But that's exactly that the point. Be, I'll be frank that's with exactly you. That's exactly the point. I'll, I'll be frank has with the, you. Has that the Congress, be committing has political the Congress checkmated no, you then? No political party wants to, no political party will yes. commit political harakiri because they are using brazenly, they are wasting 1,000 crores on media right now yes. to hard sell this program which has nothing for the poor. Let, let me take that to Jai Panda. Do you believe therefore that for all the, we can have all the debates we want, political debates can take place in television studios about how this food security bill has, could have extremely negative economic consequences, particularly on the fiscal deficit, but political parties in public during an election year cannot be seen to be anti-poor. Therefore, the perception game is what is worrying the opposition today. Rajdeep, uh, clearly somebody has not done their homework because my party did actually vote against the bill yesterday. Right. Uh, and we are not afraid of calling a spade a spade. Yes. Uh, we are not seen as anti-poor in Odisha because we have built our credibility by making sure that we look after our poor people. Yes. But this bull bill is very seriously flawed. Yes. And uh, you've heard all the arguments, so we don't need to go into the flaws. I want to make a point here. Yes. That the government does not have the credibility to lay out either this bill or any of the other reforms that they are talking about. Right. Today you, you showed the debate in parliament and I participated in that. If you listen to the government, it's always somebody else's fault right. that our, our economy is doing badly. Uh, a few years ago when the US economy went into recession, we blamed the global crisis. Right. Uh, in recent weeks, the US economy has picked up and we are saying that because the US economy has picked up, it's harming us. So we, you know, our government argues both sides of that argument. Uh, sometimes they say it is because of coalition governments that the country's economy is in a mess. Right. But it has been nearly 25 years since any single party had a majority. We've had coalitions for nearly 25 years. And why is it only in the last couple of years that it seems that the government cannot manage a coalition? Uh, they also sometimes blame the judiciary, sometimes the media. It's just never their fault. The point is the government needs to own up that it has mismanaged. Right. Uh, this government, as I said in Parliament today, is is will you, uh, is, will you is concede uh, shackled that? by Abhishek, cronyism. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, will you concede what Jai Panda is saying at least that this government has mismanaged the economy? Let's let's be clear. Let's call a spade a shovel tonight. The fact is, you mismanaged the economy over the last four years. Now, in the last few months, you're bringing in bills which, far from being growth oriented are again being seen as doles, as shops, as handouts to win another election. I mean, surely this government of the day knows better look, than that. The, you can't take the people for a ride all the time, sir. Let me, let me give you a simple answer to yes. that. The way you put it just now, yes. because I ignore the uh, first part of your question, obviously you don't expect me to concede anything. Yes. But that's only rhetoric by you. Yes. Your question... Yes suggests a massive fraud on the public being played. So does my good friend Mr. Gujral's intervention. Yes. I want to ask one question. Yes. Out of some what, 25-30 uh, parties in different forms in parliament, are you hunting and finding one party opposing this great fraud being perpetrated on the people? One party. Jai Panda has All said the he, other parties. Jai Panda has already said his party opposed uh, Completely anti public interest that they are not prepared to oppose it, even make a vote which will not count and keep their uh, paper clean. Rajdeep, but democracy we works we, through we voted impulses against it. which go back to the public because <laughs> these public. That's what I'm saying. That you are able to find one party of Mr. Jai Panda out of some 30, 40 parties in both houses of parliament which has voted against it.
I, does it mean that the Indian polity, which depends, which is a democracy, which goes by impulsive democracy, has lost its mind that the overwhelming majority doesn't find it a fraud sufficient to stop it being passed? Can I, can, can and I, I just... Find a, and I must make that contradiction, I must underline that contradiction. Can I just... If you, Rajdeep, don't oppose it in parliament, then you also have no business to oppose it in your channel. You're saying if you don't oppose it I in parliament, is, you're, Naresh Kujar, you want to quickly respond to that? This is if you don't oppose it in parliament, I don't mean one you, party. Look, one you no, I don't mean one I party. I mean every party. Okay. Because every party knows which side their political bread is buttered. They also know that in a democracy, unlike China or dictatorship, this whole system is give and take. Can you I decide to go to the people with a program and you come back with their votes if they find the program good enough? Can I bring Naresh Gujar in? the abstract ivory tower charity going on here. Can I bring Naresh Gujar quickly respond Rajdeep? to what you heard from Dr. Singh? Raj, uh, Rajdeep, Raj this is nothing but PDS repackaged. And we are not against PDS. We want the poorest of the poor to get the food. But this bill is actually cheating those, those poorest of the poor because they are reducing their quota. And we have raised this yesterday also and we will raise it in Rajya Sabha also. Okay, you are saying uh, it, it, you will raise it in Rajya Sabha as well. Let me come to you Sandeep Shastri though for a moment. You know, it's interesting somewhere that politicians in TV studios are taking different positions but by and large in Parliament, most of them did not vote against the bill. And the parallel being drawn, Mr. Shastri, Dr. Shastri, is between Narega and the farm loan waiver, which the Congress believes won it the 2009 elections, and now food security. Do you really believe this is a political game changer? Because the fact is, even in 2009, the UPA actually did better in urban areas than rural areas. And the fact is, in 2009, the economy was not in the kind of crisis situation that it finds itself today. Uh, Rajdeep, I think uh, politically it's uh, too late to recover and economically it is too severe to recover. Uh, the examples you quoted earlier of Narega or other schemes which helped the UPA in uh, 2009, uh, let's remember that the implementation of those schemes did not begin in the last year of the, of the first UPA but began much earlier. And uh, this time we are talking of this scheme coming up in the last month. Uh, the content of the bill may be great, but I think the context in which this whole uh, bill is being taken forward and being promoted, right. I think needs to be kept in mind. Let me therefore then turn to, that, to, the, uh, to the content for a moment, the specifics. Shankar Iyer, how much in pure economic terms do you and other critics of this bill really believe this bill will cost us? Because various figures have been touted. Some say it will cost the exchequer 1.25 lakh crores. Supporters of the bill say actually by way of handouts it is much less because there are already existing food security provisions both at the state and the center. Is there an attempt being made to scare people? to be scaremongering and is this a corporate agenda which is anti-poor? That is what congressmen are now suggesting. Well, Rajdeep, I am going to list out five bullet points on uh, what I have heard just now. Yes. First, there is an act but I don't see any evidence of any guarantee of the food being delivered because the 40% leakage issue is yet to be resolved. Yes. B, it, the bill talks about nutritious food whereas vegetables and protein products have shot up four times in the last eight years and that inflation these guys can't manage. C. As far as whether how much damage this will do, let me just read out some figures for you. When this government came to power, they had a subsidy bill of something around 45,000 crores. It's upwards of 2.5 lakh crore. The basic structure of the economy just now is that the revenue since 2004 to 2013 has grown four times. Your fiscal deficit has grown five times. Your borrowings have grown seven times. And your internal debt has grown ten times. This is the most uh, patented uh, public policy uh, that we are seeing now. The UPA has patented uh, what everybody in other infrastructure projects has been talking about. This is PPP, public-private partnership, that is public uh, expenditure, which is public financing right. of private political ambitions. 
public finance this government public should have first fixed yes go ahead public finance of private political uh, ambition this government has had done a series of things they were supposed to create jobs move people from farms to factories so they got narega they were supposed to invest in agriculture they introduced msp an increased msp the simple arithmetic is yield into acreage is income right they have done nothing in the last 10 years to improve yield now i want to also quickly flag what uh, abhishek mentioned about the money that is going as exemption to corporates yes i have also argued about it and written about it it's about 20 lakh crore in the last 7 years now the service tax exemption the customs exemption and the excise exemptions are given by the central government who has been at the center the upa the capital gains tax which did not get restored who is responsible for it the center the wealth tax that we collect we have in india 52 forbes billionaires their combined wealth is 300 billion dollars what is the wealth tax that the country collects 1200 crores so you're saying the upa has ha, does so not have the moral for, no no one more point one more point yes. one more point rajdeep one more point last week the direct tax code bill went to cabinet yes it was stalled why because there were higher taxes on the rich abhishek malu singh we respond to what so you are hearing from sankaraya so let's not get Iyer. carried away be, uh, let, let's not get carried away abhishek manu singh we shankar ayar making some very no, strong I, points your government at one level protects the rich promotes their interests yeah. and yet claims to be pro poor look first of all then from dismantling the exemption that there are a large number of i mean this government has used subversion go ahead has, uh, abhishek has subverted let, let abhishek subverted respond subverted the electoral process to no no one second abhishek just bear with me on that yes w one could argue that this is subversion or perversion of the incentive in the electoral process right on one side you give exemptions to corporates don't do the things that they need on the other side you give subsidies to the poor and don't do the things that they need quick response abhishek manu singh is it any Manu-Singh. surprise that we are at 4.5% gdp you can't have so many figures thrown and then you want a quick response <laughs> the responses as follows rajdeep yes, first of all i do not expect a large number of economists yes. who have pre stated positions who have written about it to be convinced by any argument which the upa will give or the passers of the bill have given in parliament so i don't think i am here to change the view of mr shankar ayer number 2 if in fact and this is very important we have had since 2004 a series of such moves not one Yes. Madrega farm loan waiver is one part but there are many such schemes on health on bima uh, bima yojana on uh, uh, many of the other you know schemes which have all india coverage etc etc there are these 10 of them and each president uh, each year's president address this is not coming now right? just look at this from 2004 if you have so many of these schemes is this doomsday scenario painted by mr ayer is it correct along with that we've had excellent growth along with that we've had a balancing it's only because for the last 18 months yes you are not explaining you are not you are not confronting his basic point you provide, Now, taxes you provide exemption in taxes to the rich you provide exemption in taxes to the rich and and then you if, claim if anybody suggests if look these taxes or the so called exemptions have been the same through several governments they have gone up or gone down little bit but they've been in structurally in place for several governments they require a structural change in some cases it may not have happened but to suggest that of all people the upa with its obviously signature campaign for the aam aadmi and inclusiveness is giving away money to the rich and robbing from the poor i want to ask a simple question yes. was that the basis on which we were voted back in 2009 could it have been the basis because barring uh, food security a lot of our schemes the very same popular schemes which mr shankar to, which are anathema to mr shankar ayer Shankar, quick response. Quick response to what you are hearing. As 
schemes quick, in the public they, benefit. They, quick, now, quick, public no, no, benefit no, no, schemes no, no. don't, they, meet, want, immediate, they, don't they, meet immediate economic criteria. Quick they response. don't meet Samuelson's microeconomic test. Quick they response. don't meet the efficiency okay. criteria which economists two, like to reveal. Two it. points. But yes. they are two, seen two by points. the public as doing quick two points. Quick response. Shankar, I want to add in the debate. One second, one second, one second only. Two points. Two points. If you put, like lawyers, if you put two economists in a room, you will get six opinions. Shankar, you have quick response. Opinion and I respect his opinion. I write his column. Well, but yes. that doesn't mean it's the only correct economic uh, economic opinion. Shankar, I, quick response. I mean that that's nice to hear from somebody whose government is headed by an economist, Abhishek. But let me give you two quick things. 2009, the Congress won because of the incompetency of the opposition, and because of three gentlemen called Raj Thakre, Chiranjeevi, and Vijay Kant who split the votes. Okay. This government spends 7 lakh crores every year on social sector programs. Your human index, development index is at the worst. The hunger index is at the worst. Your, the malnutrition is worse. Uh, and I, can, I could go on and on. Okay. Let me, uh, you know, before we all train our bullets on Abhishek Manu Singhvi, I know he's capable of handling all those bullets, but Siddharth Zarabi, was the finance minister virtually forced to swallow this bitter pill? Will it now make it even more difficult, many believe, to get the economy back on track? We've, you know, it's almost as if Mr. Chidambaram is the last man standing now. Is there a fear now that with this move, for all its, be uh, you know, will it in a may way make his task of sticking to his fiscal deficit targets that much more difficult? Well, you know, uh, we're already hearing of a three rupee hike in diesel in two, three days time. Well, you know, I think uh, the most sense as far as the numbers go was made by Mr. Gujral. The fact is, if you look at the numbers, there is only a budgeted 10,000 crore extra expenditure that is envisaged on the food security bill. Yet in the first supplementary demand of grants, the finance minister has not sought parliament's approval for any additional spending. We are already half uh, complete with the f financial year. This bill, even in spite of the ordinance, will take several months to implement. Recall what Sonia Gandhi said. She said it is riddled with flaws. Recall what other people have said that this is work in progress. None of this is really going to translate into full-fledged spending of the sort that people fear within the current financial year. So I am afraid the fiscal maths is suspect and a very clever, perverse sort of trick has been played on the people of India. Uh, it is a repackaged numbers with no additional permission yet sought for spending. So if anybody knows the Consolidated Fund of India and spending procedures, we know that you have to first seek appropriation for amounts. There are no such promises and the finance minister, when he says he's going to stick to a red line on that, is being truthful and honest. Whether this is a trick being played on the people of India, we'll get those answers uh, perhaps at election time, Rajdeep. Exactly. In a moment from now, let me just take, take a pause because I want to then look at elections. How will this actually do populist schemes like this or popular as Abhishek Manu Singhvi is calling them actually make a difference to voting patterns? Let's take a break at this point. Come back with much more because this really is the big story of our times. The economy versus politics. Good politics, bad economics. Is that what we are looking at and is that what the country is staring at? Back in a moment with our panel as we look closely at the food security bill. Welcome back. The big question, of course, that we are raising tonight at a time when the country's economy, uh, economy is on a fiscal cliff. Food security bill, political game changer, or economic catastrophe. Let's just tell you before we come back to our panel, what happened when we did our poll during our election tracker? One of the questions we asked, will the food bill impact voting? 37% had said yes, 28 had said no, can't say was 34%. Remember, this was conducted in the month of June. Clearly somewhere, Naresh Gujral, there is a fear factor. Let's be honest, and you've been quite candid on this program. There's a fear factor, isn't there, that the food security bill could become a political game changer, which is why even the sophisticated arguments that need to be made against the bill, the fact, for example, in a state like yours in Punjab, storage, grains are not being stored. The, Mr. Sharad Pawar openly admitted the other day in Parliament that more than 40,000 crores were being lost every year because of wastage. None of these arguments hold water because you are worried about its political fallout. Is that true? Your <clears throat> poll was held a few days ago. Yes. 
Till then, the contours of this bill were not very clear to the people of India. Now, as it comes out, yes, and as the people will begin to see through this bill that they are getting nothing, it's just window dressing. But how will you explain that to I'm the people? Sure how will Naresh Gujral uh, you explain? Let's be honest. There is a large number of people in this country who want five kilos of grain free. Now, they are not going to get into the sophisticated arguments that an economist may give in a television studio. How will you convince them that this bill, as you are saying, is window dressing and bad for the country? Because today, the television and newspapers, they have penetrated all over. Right. They are in the villages, they are in small towns, and people watch it. And they know, when people like us talk, they watch these debates. And they know that they are being taken for a ride. And I'm sure when you hold your next poll, yes. the results will be very different. But I... the problem is different. Yes. The louder the Congress guys scream, yes. the only people that they scare are the investors and the FDI. And as a result, the rupee plummets by the day, which leads to more inflation. Okay, let, let, we, so we, they are actually, we, we they are actually destroying the economy with this. They are destroying the economy with this. At the same time though, Jai Panda, what is interesting is every political party wants its own food security scheme. The Chhattisgarh government wants it, you want it in Orissa, all of you have implemented it and it's become a case of my food security scheme is better than yours. For example, no political party today is talking of a better targeted scheme. Whether it is a Narendra Modi, whether it is a Naveen Patnaik, whether Raman Singh or whether now Sonia Gandhi, all of them want to back a food security bill. So it's become competitive food politics. Isn't that the reality that, we are st that is staring us in the face? Rajdeep, let us see this in the context of uh, good economics versus politics. And you are aware that uh, more than half a dozen states continue to do very well. Uh, states like Odisha, Bihar, Gujarat, Chhattisgarh, Madhya Pradesh, they have growth rates today which are double the national average. Uh, they have poverty reduction which is significantly faster than the national average. And yet these are the states where the political leaders are getting rewarded and they are getting re-elected time and again. Now, I want to say that in, in a democracy, you have to balance some degree of populism with uh, fiscal uh, conservatism. You can't have a completely laissez-faire approach uh, and, have, and, and say that the poor will only get trickle-down benefits, but neither can you spend far more than your economy can afford. So you need to concentrate on growing the economy and you need to cater to some degree of urgent popular demand from your voters. But that balance is what has been lost at the national level, whereas it exists today at several regional uh, uh, states Let, and several regions of the country. And in the nation, that balance has been lost. That's an interesting point you're making, because Sandeep Shastri, we've already seen in Karnataka, government, new government comes in, Congress government, Siddharamaya, what is one of his first acts? One rupee rice. I mean, let's be clear that we are, it seems that every state now has made this a mantra. To attract voters, I need to in some way be involved with food security to the poor. So to that extent, what the states think today, the Congress is thinking, or what the states thought yesterday, the Congress is thinking today. Uh, Rajdeep, four points on this. Yes. I think one very clearly, yes. any of these schemes and how people will respond in the election is largely linked to what they get at the ground level. I think what the state governments do has a critical role to play in how people define and decide how they vote in a Lok Sabha election. That is the first point I'd like to make. Yes. The second point I think is the different political parties are today looking at the political dividends of such moves and the economic cost does not really seem to matter. And the third point I'd like to make is a food security bill at this stage, while the promise is great, yes. what would happen in terms of implementation before a election I think is critical. And the last point I think is can a food security bill arrest a general sense of insecurity that is there in the country with regard to what a government has done for a period of time? Okay. I think all these dimensions would need to be taken into account when we talk about what such a food security bill can do for a government, for a country, for a party in the next election. You know, I, I have to ask you that, Dr. Singhvi, because let's be honest, in 2004 and 2009, the economy was, uh, was on a high growth track. Today, the economy is struggling. As I said, it's on a fiscal cliff. 
Today there are jobs being lost. Inflation is high. At a time like that, you know, uh, it, it's not just the content of food security bill, it's the context, I think, as Sandeep Shastri put it, which is troubling people. It's almost as if the Congress is not alive to the larger challenge. This is a challenge at the moment look, look, to get uh, the investor Rajiv, confidence back, to get the country back on high Rajiv, growth, to prevent people from losing jobs. Aren't those your top concerns, Dr. Singhvi, at the moment? Shouldn't that be your government's top priority? Rajdeep, uh, three or four quick points. Yes. First of all, your very important point uh, about several states having food security bills and almost every debate I start on this subject, I find the BJP starting with hearkening back to Mr. Raman Singh of Chhattisgarh. Yes. Well, if this, all these doomsday scenarios you've been hearing for the last one hour are all so terrible, then how come these state security, food security bills are being touted all over? You've got no answer to that. I have an answer. Secondly, one very important, no, let, me, let me finish, please. Okay. please. You haven't okay. got any answer from the states which tout it. Because those very states which are highly critical of the central food security bill, Doubt their respective political party state bill. Now there has to be conceptually nothing wrong. Uh, there may be an error of okay, detail. Can I get Jay Panda to respond? You, you made a direct point. Second, no, 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 one minute. Hold on, Dr. Singh, one minute. No, one second. minute. You one made an important point. Finish, you made an important no, no, point. No, no, let no, Jay no, Panda no, no, I'll come back to you, Dr. Singh. I'm not letting you go anywhere. Jay Panda, respond to that. That when it comes to state level, you think it's a great food security and you criticize the Congress. Respond to that. Can I, can I? Rajdeep, I, yes. I already said it. Let me reiterate very quickly. Yes. That you, if, you, if you analyze the state bills across the states, you'll find that they're all within the means of the state's economy. And what is being proposed at the national level obviously is not being perceived that way because you've seen the reaction of the markets. You've seen the reaction of the economists. He, uh, a little bit earlier uh, in the show, you showed the deputy chairperson of the planning commission saying that the Food subsidy is not the only subsidy, there are other subsidies, so why should we be so concerned about some help to the poor? But then, are you actually cutting down any other subsidies? You are not. So, the, the issue is not food subsidy bills or food security bills, the issue is, yes. are you living within your means or not? Quick response now to that, Dr. Singhvi. You've, you've heard no, what uh, the, the state government is saying. This no, government no, 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 is living no, beyond minute. its I means I... and the country is being forced to tighten its, uh, its belts think... for your political benefit. Uh, Rajdeep, I think I'm entitled to charge you with unfairness because you have four voices out there with the same perspective. You have me alone and you have an aggressive anchor interrupting me. I think that's not fair. That's point number one. Okay. Number two, uh, number two, not only is there a clear paradox yes. between saying my shirt and your shirt, both are white but mine is better than yours. That's the paradox about every state security bill being okay and others, and the central one being terrible. No, Siddharth Zarabi is making a good point. point. He's saying that, that their, uh, their yeah. shirt is cut to a particular cloth, while your shirt is a, is a larger, ah, I imagine. Is a, it's not fitting I, you anymore. It is imaginary. No, it's too no. large. On the one hand, the charge is yes. that there is no additional uh, consolidated fund of India demand. Yes. And on the other hand, the same breath, there is a charge that yes. there is fiscal indiscipline. I don't understand how. People can talk like this. There is a contradiction in even in the sentences I'm hearing. Can I get... But on the second point, no, 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 it's very important. Is, no, yes, 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 sir, sir, you to begin Dr. Doctor, Doctor Singhvi, there no, is no contradiction. Rather, there there is no point, contradiction. Second point, one second, one second. In the Congress Let years, the, the fiscal Let deficit me. has risen. If this was the signal that you are intent on sending, then you should have clearly spelt out the fiscal consequences. The markets are reacting to the lack of... Numbers, the they are reacting to the bill, skull drudgery the as far as the numbers bill. are concerned. They are not reacting to the, providing... Uh, no, 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 sir. I think I, uh, with, with the utmost no, respect, sorry, please look at the wrong. numbers. Ask the finance minister to clarify. Ask the prime minister to stand up. Don't blame markets for reacting let when me, you are offering repeat, no details. Let me repeat the charge of unfairness being yes. compounded by an anchor who is not folding the scales even, not allowing me to have my sentence. I don't mind, I leave it unsaid, but I'm going to speak at my pace. If you have the time, please listen to me without interruption. I'm listening to you. I mean, you know, so many I am going to give you you're time. Not, it's a not, very serious issue, you are sir. Interrupting this me is yourself. the biggest no, issue of our time. time. I'll give you more time. A, Go ahead. You are interrupting me, and A, you are interrupting me, B, you are encouraging other panelists, all with the same viewpoint to interrupt me. No, sir, but this is very unfair. Uh, let me come back to my... Of course it's unfair. Yes. Of course it's unfair. No, unfair on me, but go ahead. Now, let me, let me tell you. Yes. Uh, now, the food security bill, what yes. is forgotten, is yes. being said is simply old wine in new bottles. Yes. Even the bottles are not new. 
Yes. Tell me in which state in India, in yes. which law of India, did you have a legally enforceable right and a corresponding obligation to provide food prior to this act? Please answer that. All these facile conclusions that this is nothing but the old thing, which state and which national legislation had it? That's the big first. Yes. Thirdly, nobody is suggesting Rajdeep, and everybody knows that mind changing legislation, thing changing, thought changing legislation, they are highly imperfect. Nobody is suggesting that there are no waste problems in the country. Nobody is suggesting that the food security bill is a magic wand which will solve the distribution problems in this country. This is a work in progress. And it is, my old professor used to say a very important phrase, let not the perfect be the enemy of the good. What all these people out there in your studio are doing are finding perfect paradigm for a program which is not even born, which is struggling to be born. So you want to kill a baby, not nurture it to near perfection by saying that when it is born it should be perfect. Can That's I? the problem with the whole debate. Okay. As, as this thing progresses, Rajdeep, Can let me tell you, yes. the rakes will be found. The storage will be found. On the contrary, the best way to generate storage in this country is to have a program like so this. So we didn't, we didn't do it for 66 years. Sir, the dead so we didn't do it for 66 well, years. We didn't, the, 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 a, we didn't have a food security bill for 66 years. No, sir. The dead giveaway in terms years. of intentions, the and dead giveaway <laughs> in terms of intentions was the clause which and said one very cash whenever point, there is no food available, which your food minister had to drop on the country, floor of the house in, by moving an amendment. Country, that was the dead giveaway country, of the real intentions. You do not have the delivery mechanism mechanism for delivering the food to 67 percent of the Rajdeep, population so the fallback measure was cash yeah if, if it is we don't have the mechanism please blame us we are worse off we have promulgated a scheme and we'll be really hauled over hot coals for 40 training. percent of narega is going waste the there are leakages you have now, grain rotting in narega okay, i rest my the case the worst sir. critics of narega today rajdeep yes. the worst critics of narega today yes the worst critics the predetermined critics except that where the problem was 70%, it is down to 20% today. Let me then because you have to give it time. Okay. You can't let the, the perfect be the enemy of the good. Okay. Let me tell you one more thing. Using, in this since country, you're using your old professor, sir, free fall. sir, just a minute. The, the rupee has been the rupee has been in a free fall. Yes. There has been an economic difficulty for 18 months. Yes. This was not all generated by the food security bill. The food security bill has been around in a draft form from 2009. You Can are I? ascribing the current bills and the, the circle economy. will be you complete with the land bill, sir. The circle will be complete with the land bill. Those who can earn dollar. money and pay taxes bill. will not be the able to set up projects. The has been around for a jolly long time. Can they I? have economic difficulties and to suggest that the food security bill is responsible for the economic downturn of this country is absolutely wrong. So it's you very highly misleading. Can I take your professor? Can I borrow your professor's line and take that in conclusion then to Shankar Ayer? Shankar Ayer, let not the our search for perfection become the enemy of the good is what Abhishek Manu Singhvi says his professor told him. Do you believe that many people or critics, cynics, economists like yourself or economic journalists are in their search for perfection? being the enemy of the good. Respond to Abhishek Manu Singhvi one last time. Well, Rajdeep. Yes. The history of this government's outlays. Yes. And the performance in terms of outcomes. Yes. Is very well known. The yes. problem is not so much about the food security bill. Yes. Or the costs that it entails. Yes. The problem really is that the economy is, has been a train wreck much before the food security bill arrived at the station. If your internal debt has gone up 10 times and your revenue 4 times, it says a lot about the classic mismanagement of the economy. Right. Having said that, I want to actually take this to another level. We have to as a country look at the kind of perverse incentives we are creating in the system. How all the political parties are guilty of it. If you collect the data on all the shops and the laptops and stuff that is being given out, it is primarily because they can't put their minds to fixing the thing. A few minutes back, my friend Abhishek Manu Singh, we said, that none of the other states uh, schemes have a legislation, a guarantee, a justiciable act. Yes. Does the government of India and the state governments now admit that unless something is justiciable, they are free to not deliver it? 
that you will have a PDS scheme for 20 years which has malperformed. You have an ICDS scheme on malnutrition that we spend 20,000 crores on and yet 200 children die every hour. The problem is with the incentives, the, the perversion of the electoral. We are by creating perverse incentive structures are denying people the right to demand governance. That is the point I am saying. I am all for a food security bill. I am all for guarantee to the poorest of the poor. What justification does the government have to expand it to 67% if it is not the historic okay. failure of the political class to address the issues okay. of the nation. Abhishek Manu Singh, you want to I get one, uh, one uh, last response yeah. since you've been... I, I, I know you're yes, saying that yes. it's been all against one, but the fact is I don't think that's necessarily matter, the case. I don't matter. think... I think there I is a general. Want, I only want time to speak. I don't care about the uh, all against one point. It's oh, only that's that you need okay. I am going to give you the final word. Saying, you deserve the final word today. Let me end by saying. Yes. Ultimately, food security bill. Yes. As I said is an evolving theme which will improve and go towards perfection with each passing no, day. No, answer Sa I Shankar's question. Answer Shankar's question, no, no, sir. I, this is for not 20 the time years, you the are PDS closing the debate. Has it is malperformed. not the time. ICDS has malperformed. And what does the government course, do? You bring another large scheme because no, you believe that is the only the way you can is, win an election at a time you when you are riddled is, with corruption is, is, and other serious allegations. You is, want to change I the agenda. I don't accept this allegation. I don't want accept the allegation at all for a simple reason that today when a food security bill is being passed, yes. all the ills of India are yes. loaded onto the food security bill. You have a st storage problem, food security bill is a problem. You have a distribution problem, food security bill is a problem. Yes. So they are problems anyway. Those yes. are problems we need to address. Nobody is suggesting that children dying here is not a very severe governance problem which we need to address, whether it happens in Bihar or elsewhere. Yes. But does it mean that they are two mutually exclusive compartments and unless you set that problem right, you should not have a food security bill. That sequitur doesn't follow. And let me end Rajdeep by saying, yes. I see the food security bill in the words of Gandhiji. Every good idea, every good movement passes through five stages, he wrote in Young India. Yes. And I am sure those are the stages this bill is going to pass through. Those are the stages this Manrega passed through. First is indifference, second is uh, ridicule, third is abuse, fourth is repression and fifth is respect. Okay. Now the Manrega is somewhere between repression and respect. But uh, the food security is obviously somewhere between ridicule and abuse. But ultimately, I have no doubt that respect is going to be there. You Give moved, it some time. You moved today from Mahatma Gandhi to Sonia Gandhi. You are basically <laughs> yeah. saying that Sonia Gandhi is imbibing the spirit of Mahatma Gandhi. You have also quoted your old professor today. So, I know now why you are a good Supreme Court lawyer. Why when someone is in trouble, they turn to Abhishek Manu Singh. But, we using, suddenly the but Congress using Indira Gandhi tactics. Okay. Sorry? But using Indira Gandhi tactics. What, what using are the... Indira Gandhi tactics. I am using Indira Gandhi tactics. And, and but Indira Gandhi, I, let's I be... Don't... Uh, but le let's be honest, India is not in 1971, this is 2013, the world has changed, politics has become more competitive, the nature of politics has changed compared to 1971. That's but what the... Abhishek Manu Singh... That's what the BJP's allies said in 2009. Okay, well, <laughs> you bravely defended the Congress over the last hour. I appreciate your joining us at a time when the Congress and the government faces severe questions on the economy. Thank you all very much to my panelists for being here on this very educative one hour on the food security bill. Editors take, where do we stand? These are tough times for the economy. Hardly the moment for the UPA2 government to engage in electoral populism. But when political survival becomes an end in itself, then who cares about balancing the budget? Sonia Gandhi may well see the food security bill as a moral commitment to the poor, but the question is, why haven't we been able to address the problem for 66 years? And if similar schemes have failed in the past because of poor implementation, will this latest government gambit be any different? Couldn't the money have been better spent in strengthening existing programs and more importantly focusing on better nutrition for those who need it most? Whether this scheme is a political game changer will only be known at election time. For now, the fear is captured in an old truism. Vinashkal Vipreet Buddhi. And that's perhaps what my professor told me in college. Still ahead, Subin Mehta's Kashmir concert in Trump.